Welcome. Today I want to answer a question that not many people ask. Why are all quadratic graphs actually in the shape of a U? Now, I need to explain why I'm asking this question. First of all, let's look at a very basic quadratic, y equals x squared. If one plots points when x is 0, y is 0, when x is 1, y is 1, when x is negative 1, y is 1, when x is 2, y is 4, x is negative 2, y is 4, and so forth. That's clearly U-shaped. It's a very standard example. Uh, so this very basic quadratic is definitely a U-shape. In fact, if I modify it slightly and said uh, y equals 2x squared, so when x is 1, it's now already at 2. When x is 2, it's being at 4, it's now at 8. It's actually going to be a steeper U-shape. But nonetheless, still U-shape. And if I want to do something like uh, y equals a third x squared, um, this time it will only be as third of as high as it was before, so I'll get a broader U-shape. All right, so this very basic type of quadratic, y equals ax squared, is definitely a U-shaped graph. But people, when they say the word quadratic, usually think of a more general form of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. And here's the question. And if you think about it, it's actually very bizarre that things work out the way you've been told to do all along. This part is definitely U-shape. But this part, bx plus c, that's the equation of a straight line. And if you think about it, there's no reason to say if someone gives me a U-shaped graph and a straight line graph and I was to add these points together, who knows what's going on? Maybe it's some crazy wibbly graph. It's not at all obvious that a U plus a line has to equal a U again. But let me explain what's going on. It does turn out to be the case. Everything your teachers have told you or implied, because most people don't, don't actually say this, is true. Here goes, let me explain why all quadratics are actually U-shaped graphs, even when you start adding lines to them. Uh, this is going to uh, piggyback on the videos on completing the square and so forth for quadratics, so I'm going to assume you're familiar with all this stuff. Here goes, I'll do one example that illustrates the entire technique. Let's look at y equals, th whoops, where's my pen gone, sorry, y equals 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. There's a U-shape, there's a straight line. Why would a U plus a line guarantee another perfect U-shape? Well, the trick is to complete the square. What I'm going to do is follow my bizarre technique, which most people don't do. I'm going to multiply everything through by 3. Why am I doing that? Have a look at another video. This is 9x squared plus 6x plus 3. Um, I actually like the 9x squared. That's a perfect square. Uh, what I'm going to do now is draw a little diagram on the side, doo -doo 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 -doo, and I'm going to claim that all this really comes from something very nice. There's a 9x squared piece which comes from multiplying 3x by 3x. Completing the square is literally completing a picture of a square. I want two pieces that, if it's a square, it's going to be symmetrical, so this piece and this piece are going to be the same value, that together make 6x, which means I want a 3x here and a 3x here. Something times 3x is 3x, this better be 1, this will be 1, which means I want the final fourth piece to be 1 times 1, which is 1. Trouble is, I don't have a 1. Well, I'm an adult, I can do whatever I like, I want to create a 1, I can do that by subtracting 2 from both sides. So 3y minus 2 is 9x squared plus 6x plus 1. Why do I do that? Well, I recognize all this from my picture on the right as really 3y minus 2 is 3x plus 1 squared. All right. Uh, let me just do a tad more work on this. Since the equation start off with y equals something, let's get back to y equals something in the end. So 3y, I'm sorry, I lost my pen again. 3y would be 3x plus 1 squared minus 2. Uh, whoops, sorry, plus 2. And y would have to then be 1 third 3x plus 1 squared plus two-thirds. There, that's actually interesting. Now it seems believable that I've actually gotten for myself here a rewritten version that's basically the x squared graph again. It looks like this really could be U-shape. Well, I did uh, present a video on graphing quadratics in a ridiculously easy way. Um, I'm going to assume we're familiar with that as well, but we're, we're all set to really graph this thing. Uh, let's get the pen again. Here's some axes. Now, this graph really does to me basically look like y equals x squared, but it's transformed. Instead of ha 
happening at a nice place with uh, just x. I've now got 3x plus 1 squared. What number is behaving like 0 here? Well, x being negative a third is behaving like 0. So whatever this graph was doing at 0, this graph is doing it at x equals negative a third. Uh, this one third in front, we're sure is gonna, we've seen, is going to make a broad U-shaped graph. And uh, this two thirds plus two thirds at the end is going to shift everything up two thirds. So, okay, this is basically the graph y equals x squared, with everything what's happening at zero was happening at negative one third now, so the vertex is of negative one third. It's going to be two thirds units up, and it's a fairly broad U. Voila. Taking a U shaped graph and adding a line to it, this algebra, this algebra completing the square, essentially keeps you in the y equals x squared form, but it's actually transformed. But the transformation is such that's another U-shaped graph again. So there we have it. Taking any old formula you like, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, it's a remarkable fact that adding a line to a U by doing the algebra of completing the square is guaranteed to give you another U-shape. It'll be a times x minus something squared plus something else, I'll call it m. These numbers can be weird, but nonetheless, it's basically just a transformed version of a U-shape to begin with. All right, thanks very much.